problem three, find the maximum value of the tensile load T that may be applied based on the block shear strength of the plate. Okay, so for the block shear strength, let's say we consider the upper plate. So this is the end of the upper plate or the edge. So one case of block shear path is this one. Okay, so let us call this as case one. In solving for the block shear, we need to solve three areas. First is the gross area in shear. That is AGV. So for the gross area in shear, that is the area that is parallel to the direction of the load. So if this is the direction of the load, the area being considered for shear is this one. Okay, so these are the shear areas. So we solve for the dimension. So that is S1 plus 2S2 to get the total dimension. S1 is 50 and based on the problem, S2 is 75. We get the total width that is 50 plus 275. This is the total width. We just multiply this by the thickness. And don't forget to multiply by 2 because we have 2 areas in shear. Therefore, AGV is 10,000 square millimeters. And then we compute for the net shear area. So meaning the previous shear width, we will just subtract the number of holes. So for this one, we have 1, 2, and 0.5 of diameter of the hole. We will get the net shear width. Okay, so by the way, why did we consider 2.5 holes? Because in getting the shear area, we want to get this one, this one, and then this one. So to get that, we will subtract one diameter, another diameter, and half of this diameter of the hole. So that is why we will subtract a total of 2.5 holes. 27 plus 2. And then we multiply this by thickness and we multiply also by 2 because we have two shear areas. Okay, so the net shear area is 6375 square millimeters. Lastly, we solve for the net tension area. The two areas previously labeled are for shear and then for the tension, this is the tension area. So for tension area, the area is perpendicular to the application of the load. So that is why this is the dimension for tension. So to get the area for tension, that is 2 S4, that is 2, 150. And then we subtract how many holes? 0.5 from this one, 0.5 of another hole here, and then one complete hole. So all in all, we will subtract a total of two holes. And then we just multiply this by 25. Net area for tension is 6,050. Before we compute the nominal block shear strength, we have to compare 0.6 Fy AGV versus 0.6 Fu ANV. So the lesser of these two will be used for the shear part of the block shear nominal strength. So 0 0.6 times 248 times AGV. So we compare this with 0 0.6 of FU ANV. This should be 10,000. So this is 1488. And then the other one is 1530. Okay, so the letter of the two is 1488. Therefore, in getting the nominal blocker strength, the formula is 0.6 Fy AGV plus UBS FU ANT. So the first part, this is for shear. And then the second part of the block shear strength formula is for tension. Okay, so let us solve. 
So Rn equals 1488 plus UBS. UBS is 1.0 because the plate is in uniform tension. So that is our assumption in tension members that we are solving. So F sub U is 400 and then A sub NT is 6050. So therefore, the nominal block shear strength for case 1 is 390E. This is in Newton, so dividing it by 1000, we will obtain 3908 kilonewton. Okay? So we're not yet done because this is only the case 1. For case 2, so we will consider this path. So we have shear. So this is the shear part. And then the tension part is this one. Okay? And then this is the shear. So again, we will compute for the three areas. So AGV. This is the same AGV as before, but we will not multiply it by 2. So we have 50 plus 275. Then we just multiply this by 25. We have 5,000 square millimeters. And then A and V we have, we just subtract the holes, 50 plus 275 minus 2.5 of the holes, 27 plus 2 times 25. A and V equals 3187.5 and then for tension area we have that is s3 plus 2 s4 for the gross width s3 is 50 and then s4 is 150 then we multiply this by the number of holes we have 1 1 and another 0.5 so all in all we will subtract 2.5 of the holes therefore we have a sub nt that is six nine three seven point five square millimeters. Okay, so let us now compare point six fy agv and point six fu anv. So we have point six fy times agv that is five thousand. And then 0.6 FU, A and V is 3187.5. So let us compute these two. We have 744,000 and then 765,000. Okay, so the lesser of the two is 744,000. Therefore, the nominal block shear strength is... 0.6 FY AGV plus UBS FU ANT. We substitute 0.6248 times AGV, which is 5000, plus UBS is 1.0, FU is 400, A sub NT is 6937.5. Therefore, the nominal block shear strength is 3519. This is in Newton. So in kilonewton, we just divide that by 1000. This is equivalent to 3519 kilonewton. We now have solved the nominal block strength of case 1 and case 2. So we have 3519 versus the case 1, which is 3908. So therefore, the governing block strength is the lesser of the two, which is 3519 kilonewton. So therefore, to get the capacity, we just divide this by the factor of safety. So this is now the capacity of the plate for block shear. That is 1759.5 kilonewton. So now we can compare the demand and the capacity. The demand for the upper plate is T. And then we compare that with the allowable capacity of 1759.5 kilonewton. So therefore, 
the value of the tensile load T should not exceed 1759 so that block shear failure will not occur in the plate. So the answer is letter A.